Always get that friend that won't get off their phone, eh? Yeah, I know, far out. Sorry. What's up? <laughs> did you say it was something about me, did you? <laughs> I'd cut the one. Hello everyone, we're back. This is the Chip Lunch Podcast. Uh, I was kicked off the last few episodes because I didn't bring any chips, but... <laughs> bring in the salt, not necessarily the well, chicken so salt. Well, so was the chicken salt. That was what, that yeah, was the problem. That's why. that's why I was kicked off. Uh, tut, tut. More just, we just wanted to get some other guests on, guys, and that was cool. So I hope you enjoyed those two episodes. But we're back um, here with Brayden, here with Ethan. How are you guys? Doing well. Good to have you back, Joel. Thank you. <laughs> It's yeah, we time. miss you. <laughs> yeah, I've been on hiatus uh, for a few for a few weeks, and uh, now I'm back, uh, ready to go. Uh, we kind of have gone through a process of talking about how we became Christians, how we uh, were Christians in school, pri- primary school for Ethan, high yeah. school for us too, and then you we talked, you talked with Gemma and Lewis about those those kind of things as well. And Lewis became a Christian after high school. Perhaps it's good to talk about what it's like being a Christian as you're coming out of high school and what happens after that, even, yeah. even with friends. What do you reckon? What are your thoughts? One of the things one of the things I chatted about last episode that I'd love to hear your hot take on, Joel. Uh, yes, I'll bring the salt spice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is that uh, I found myself coming out of high school and having suddenly way more friendship groups. Right. Because what happened was I went and got a job and I went and went to uni and I went and got a, I did another gap year program called Year 13 uh, and I still had church so that's, and I still had my school friends. And so you, you meet people and make friends with people in all of those areas. And then suddenly uh, you use, you, you know so many more people. Yes. And you end up juggling all those people. Um, and sometimes it's not juggling, sometimes it's actually like people get lost along the way. Um, which we laughed about last <laughs> time. <laughs> um, but yeah, what did you did you find that kind of thing happening post high school? Uh, not for me, actually. I would probably, as I spoke about in, the last, in a previous episode, I kind of moved away from my high school friends, mm. basically, um, and then just kind of became my only real friendship group, maybe two years after high school was um, my friends at church. Um, Cause I still, I still was in contact with friends from school, but um, that kind of tapered off. So it was a little bit different for me. I suppose, I suppose I went, I took a year off school to work full time. Sorry, I, di- I didn't go to uni straight away, yep. oh, cool. which was the original plan. Um, and I was gonna go overseas, but then I, we kind of changed that around. I just went overseas with my family for six weeks at the end of the year after finishing high school and then um then went to uni so and then <laughs> at uni I, I should admit that at uni i had like probably one friend for the whole <laughs> three years and he was the only guy that lived in that i knew that lived in the solon shire as well <laughs> so we kind of it was really funny we like met across we had to pick up a worksheet and went to pick it up at the same time <laughs> oh <laughs> And we're like, oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah, <laughs> our eyes met across a across a worksheet that we had to pick up <laughs> in a tute at uni. Um, and then so, Lady but then the we train. ended up like, we didn't realise, but we were like sitting next to each other or something. Oh, yeah. that's the and best. And then we started talking like, oh, and then we just became friends um, through that. So that was probably the only real other friendship group that I kind of developed after high school, which is a bit different to you. Um, and it also sounds interesting that like youth works, I think going, doing year 13 at YouthWorks would have made that very different as well. Like if you're doing that then you're planning to go to uni, like that mm. extends your friendship groups. Um, when you go into full-time work, a lot I think a lot of people, that becomes a friendship group because you yeah. spend mm. so much time with people yeah, in full-time absolutely. work. Um, but I find it really healthy that I have all my friends at church um, outside of that. I think there's quite a lot of, I experience a lot of non-Christian people not having any friends out not many friends outside of work Mm. and so Mm. all their friendships are invested in their work and all that kind of stuff and sometimes i'm not sure if that's the healthiest thing just because of the way that it's kind of set up because you're always at the point where you like you're likely to just move jobs like change jobs yeah and a lot of the time people just cut ties with you 
they're always like, oh, you can, s- yeah, yeah, stay in touch, stay in touch. It's like, no, no one stays in touch from your previous jobs, really. Yeah. Well, in my experience, I should say. So, yeah, anything for, for you to add, Braden, on that? Uh, I'd echo the uni point. <coughs> I reckon first year uni, I probably had a group of like five friends. And yeah. then the thing was, I think it was just the way that my course was. A lot of people um, just changed what they were doing. I don't know if that... It's like a relative newer thing. Or, or change course. Yeah, yeah like yeah. a whole whole bunch of people who were doing my course just changed courses. So, yeah. like, uh, of I was at uni for four years and as three and a half, but as I um went through, like, slowly they all dropped off until I did. I remember just my final year at uni was just like, I'm just going there to get it done because there was, like, no one. Everyone had, like, moved to different things, which was a bummer. But at the same time, my wife was also... Well, my wife now, my girlfriend at the time, was also at that uni as well. So we would just hang out. And that, I think that also maybe demotivated me from making new friends later because it was just like, <laughs> I tried. Well, should I, I suppose like when I didn't make friends at uni, I was like, I think one of the reasons was because I'm like, I don't want to be friends with that guy. Like, <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> so it's just like a little bit kind of like, oh, I, I don't like the way he talks. I'm not, I'm not, oh I'm not like, like just... I was pretty, yeah, I was a little bit, little bit harsh back then. So yeah. probably out of an ego and arrogance as well. So yeah. um, it's good that you made friends. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike me, just made one. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I'd say like uh, my hard thing with uni as well was I always felt like there was a time limit on it. Like, I don't know. I was oh. like, uh, like, and especially when you're going to uni an hour away, it was kind of like, uh, I don't know. Like people are coming from all over, but mm. I'm just like I don't know. I'm only going to be here for a little while. I mean, I'm here to get a degree and leave. Like. It's a it's a transaction, exactly. Massively, I, I, there's this really funny Michael McIntyre bit that he does where he talks about. Oh, maybe is it him or is it? It might be someone else. But he talks about the fact that he got an email from his uni being like, "How did they phrase it?" Then they said, "Give us some money." <laughs> As a gift. Give me money. We want a gift. <laughs> but only if it's money. Because you used to go here. <laughs> <laughs> alumni. Yeah, it's oh, yeah, like yeah. you're an alumni, so yeah. give me money. And he's like, oh, no, it wasn't. It was, it was, uh, the, ro- <sighs> no, keep, keep going with it's, the story. It's really, it's, but it's, it's this concept of he's like, I went to university and I gave you money and you gave me a piece of paper. <laughs> And now we're done. That's all I was there for was that piece of paper. I have no commitment otherwise. And yeah. And I think maybe, I think the thing I had was like ETH, I had a really strong group of high school friends. So therefore I think the uni friends yeah. thing wasn't as appealing already. Like I think some people like really relish the chance to like, they jump fully into uni and like that's then their group and and like that's cool you can do whatever you mm. want like but also the depends. thing was i just didn't have that need yeah i and feel like i reckon also depends what course it is because like i would go there for the minimum amount of time i had to be there and yeah. then leave yeah that was um because okay. i think but other people would like oh like we're in the same course but we're staying we have to stay here for seven hours because we've got like this lecture here and then this lecture later and, blah, yeah. and we'll hang out in between i never had that i think i went mm. Three or f- three days, and just th- and had two subjects on one day, and then it was just like, yeah, I don't want to be here. Yeah. <laughs> like it was just kind of like. Also, I don't want to be too harsh on the University of Western Sydney, but the University of Western Sydney campus at Campbelltown, where I spent most of my time, is the longest campus ever. It's like <laughs> narrow and long, so you have to go like from one end to the other if you need to go to something. There's no like kind of walking across. It's ah, all just okay. this huge long line yeah. of buildings. So if you need to go from the library down to a tutorial or lecture, you have to walk the full entire length of the university to yeah. get there and stuff. Yeah. You're just like, oh. I gotta say, UAW was a quite beautiful uni. It Gorgeous. is, isn't it? I love I it. Just, yeah, I think. I had a skateboard. 
that was yeah. what solved all my problems. Very yeah. uni. I would just yeah, very uni, very uni. You did you long have a bag hair. with a strap too? Yeah, I did. Long yeah. hair <laughs> <laughs> and a, a long hair, ah. a skateboard, and a satchel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you need like that guy's an art student. <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys, I, I'm Ethan. I do a communications degree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. And that's what it is. Yeah. What about um, if you're moving out of uni? How did that change change for you guys? Because you both finished uni now. Mm. Mm. You only finished last year, didn't you, Ethan? Yeah. Yeah. So you go first. Um, I think I, I was a little bit, not bitter, but I was a little bit like, oh, why did I just, what did I just do with all my time? Because mm -hmm. I don't know how much I needed that. And in retrospect, I did. I think I did need it mm -hmm. because it's prepped me really well for stuff I'm doing now. However, it didn't get me a job, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I didn't come out of uni and they were like, okay, cool. Here's your, here's your full-time job. It's like, oh, okay, I came out of uni and I couldn't get a job. So I've had to try and start seven businesses at once and not quite that many, but you know what I mean? And it's, <laughs> it's like, if I can try and do as many things as I can. And all of that feels like it's stuff I could have done if I didn't have uni. Mm -hmm. uh, and if I had done at the start of uni, I'd be yeah. set up by now. Uh, so that's one of my thoughts about that was this idea that it, I did, it didn't feel like it prepped me heaps well. Um, but at the same time, I feel like I did a lot of growing up in those three years and I'm heaps more mature than I was at the years prior. And so I think I am more ready to do something like start a business now or go to full-time work now rather than a year out of high school being like, cool, gonna, I don't know, maybe I would have aged up pretty quick, but, um, but yeah, I, I, I have this mixed, yeah, at the time, and I still kind of feel like it wasn't super necessary. However, I don't know what I would have done if I didn't do it. Mm -hmm. I feel yeah. exactly how you're saying. So I did a business and commerce degree with a major in sports management. Uh -huh. Can you tell? I'm such an athlete. Um, <laughs> I felt that university made me lazy mm. and not take responsibility. Whereas I, in between high school and university, I'd worked a full-time job and I think that helped me manage my time better and know what's important and all that kind of thing. And I think university made me I don't think I was it, the learning environment was conducive to what I wanted to do. I think I'd learn better by just doing stuff. Mm. And I wish that I think looking back on it now, I'm kind of like similar to you. I wish I hadn't actually gone to uni and just mm. kept working. Mm. I think that would have made me a better. Um, you sometimes see guys that have done their apprenticeships from when they were 16, and yeah. they're really a lot more responsible and yeah. um, because they've learned how to do all those responsible things. Um, I, but having said that, the other thing that I learned at uni was how to filter information and find the mm. right information when I'm researching something and all that kind of thing. So there were good things, but I didn't like doing tests. I didn't like, a lot of the work was very much, what does that textbook say about this and all that kind of thing. Um, Business and commerce. So. Yeah. yeah, that's right. But then like I had a couple of sports management subjects and the, the people that were running that, they obviously liked doing it and they did a fantastic job. And I, <laughs> it's funny, like I think I got... In those subjects, I got HDs because they're like yeah. it was taught so well, and you're allowed to do what you wanted to do around yeah. whether it was sport or whatever it is. So I think, I think university is changing too. I think because if you look back on it in history, not many people went to university when my parents yeah. were um, at that age. But then, like there was um, a huge take up, especially in the uh, late eighties, early nineties, of people going to university, mm. and it was a kind of thing of like. Getting tertiary education is like a way of improving the economy, improving your business and or sorry, your career opportunities. But now I feel like it's like that's back to that. Just get the piece of paper kind mm. of thing. Yeah. But what seems to be happening now is that it, it doesn't guarantee you a really good job. Because everyone's doing it. Yeah. And every, yeah, because there's a, I suppose a bit of a supply and demand issue. And I think that it, in some aspects, courses just turn you, it's just a factory of t turning people out yeah. to a certain degree. So... I think the incentives around it are probably the reason that it's like that. But yeah. Um, I think, yeah, because of the internet especially is changing everything you're doing around how you learn. Yeah. Like you want to learn something, you just Google find it. it, Google it or find a guy on YouTube yeah. and shows you how to do it. Yeah. So I think, but then of course, like if you want to become a doctor, 
You, mm, you need course. to go to university, do don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you can't. Yeah. <laughs> how do I operate on this guy's stomach? <laughs> yeah, I think we're talking. Yeah. Wiki, wiki how. <laughs> <laughs> it's di- it's different answers. with the degrees that we're talking about, I think. True. Whereas, yeah, like, 100%. I completely agree with you, Joel and Eth. Like, I, I, I don't regret going to uni, but at the same time, I kind of do. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. I don't regret it, but at the same time, I feel like I could have. My my uni degree was very badly put together, very, and some subjects were really well taught, but overall the the output and the outcomes were just not well executed. I would say to mm-hmm. prepare you to go into a design context. I feel like if you were just working on yourself and working on your own um, abilities you would have been much better off with your time, with the amount of time, I think. But, I, like, then again, like, I think I, I really enjoyed that time. But I get, it's just so, it's so hard to say, like, mm. what would have gone if I hadn't have done that, what I would have done otherwise. But because I didn't really – I think my problem was I finished um, high school and I, I, I didn't know what I wanted to do at all. Yeah. Like, I had zero idea. Did you, like, you went into, you took a year to work. Like, did you kind of know what you wanted to do, Joel, or? Mm, a little bit. I remember, yeah, remember when you got to, you got to choose your course. Like, yeah. you got to nominate your courses you want and all that kind of thing. So then when you get your UAI or your ATAR, then you know what you're getting and all that kind of thing. And I was like, I still don't, still don't know what I want to do. Yeah. And the only one that um, I was like, well, that sounds pretty good was the sports management one. Yeah but I didn't get a high enough one to get into university of UTS. Uni- What's that? U- that's university of technology, Sydney. Sydney yeah. yeah. I could get that right. Mm. So then I went to UWS and it was fine, but I think taking the year off. Yeah. What I wish it made me realize is just go do full-time work. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I think like if we want to put a Christian context on it, cause it is a Christian podcast. It is <laughs> by a church. Yeah. The, I think if I had kept working, it would have taught me to take more responsibility for my faith as well. Mm. I think I, I mucked around. I think uni, and this is on me, like it's my responsibility, yeah. but I think uni made me not take my faith as seriously. And either the time, like all my friends too, like in church and stuff, they were all at uni. So it was all kind of, we were all kind of hanging out on our days off and all that yeah. kind of thing. So that was the other thing was that it was an amazing opportunity to build relationships yeah, and I really think. strong relationships with my Christian brothers and sisters who I love dearly to this day. And I spoke about when I came out, of, went to week away and I became a Christian and those people like in a year above me just loved me so much that they just had such a profound effect on me as a group. Mm. Like it was a... We're in, obviously in church, but then we had a, a closer group of friends and they had such a profound effect on me. as like talking about how I wanted to be able to relate to people better and know people better and just be more relational. And these guys helped me do that. And it was like, we just hung, hung out all the time. What are you doing? Oh, we're doing this. Let's yeah. go. Let's go do this. Like I remember hanging out with a mate and we just like drive around getting food and then we'd play xbox and then we'd just go see oh this guy's available now he's finished work let's go get him like let's yeah. like that kind of thing was just amazing so that's probably the best part about it was yeah, I'd agree not being at too. uni was just like being able to spend time with people and build relationships with them um but yeah not taking my faith seriously was probably a bit of an issue not much, it wasn't wasn't i wasn't ser- wasn't wasn't like i wasn't taking it seriously i was still definitely a christian but I didn't read my Bible much. I wasn't spending time with God. Mm. And I found that, I think, looking back on it again, if I could have done that and still done all that relation building stuff that I was doing, I think it would have been even better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, so that's probably a question to ask you guys. Like, we're talking about uni and all that kind of stuff. How did it... Like, Ethan, you talked about going to youth works and doing year 13. Yeah. How did that affect your faith? And was awesome. what was the, what was the, like, the knock-on effects going to uni? It was so, it was so good doing year 13. So, a little plug there. Uh, because one of the thoughts I had was I was coming out of high school and I wasn't 100% sure what I, what I had to do. I was 50-50 on what I'd do. And 50 was I wanted to become a pastor. Um, and that's kind of 
uh, a thing that I've wanted to do for a long time. However, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do that straight away. Yeah. And I didn't, wasn't sure if I wanted to go into theological study straight away. Mm. And cause I'd just been doing uni, I mean doing high school and I was like, I don't want to study anymore. So I did this thing called U13, which was this, uh, gap year program that is also gives you a diploma of Christian studies through youth works. And it was really good because it not only gave me all this excellent, like practical knowledge of just like, I learned more about the Bible in that year than I had learned ever. Like it was awesome. Yeah. And I found that the other option, which was, so 50-50 was become a pastor versus go to uni and do something in communications stuff. And that was where I was where I was at coming out of high school. And I was like, well, if I do this gap year, I'll figure out if I want to become a pastor or not. And I actually ended the gap year being like, you know what? I actually do. I really want to do theological training. I do want to become a pastor, but I'm actually more than ever realizing that I don't want to do it yet. Yes. I need to grow up a little bit first uh, because I think I noticed how much I grew in that year. <coughs> and, um, and now I've noticed how much I've grown since. So it's been really, uh, that was really interesting. And yeah, learning about the Bible is all, always something that's, so heaps of fun to do yeah. and is really incredible to do. And it set me up for uni really well uh, because I was able to, I think the, the we talked about high school qu questions uh, yeah. and, and apologetics kind of. Um, yeah. Uni apologetics is really different yeah. uh, because people think a little bit more by the time they're in high, in university. I wish I had a uni group and at, like Christian group at, at uni. In or saying that, I, I will I will say that I didn't actually go to one. <laughs> I went to it once and I couldn't do it. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> the only time I went was because I had nothing on. I but I was yeah. like you, Joel. Uh, Joel. I was like, I'll go down and I'll go home. Yeah. And that was all I did. So I didn't join any clubs and I didn't, and I was so invested here at church yeah. that I didn't really need that. So I think a uni, a uni Bible group is actually excellent and really, really great ministry. However, as someone who was really, really connected in a local church, I didn't think it was something I needed. Yeah. However, it is, especially at, at UOW with people coming from all over the place. And yeah, I think I'd love to chat with someone on the pod about who, who actually went to this uh, and talk about pros and cons. Cause I think there's mm -hmm. cons um, and I could talk about those, but I think there's lots of pros as well. And yeah. However, yeah, what was really good was trying to continue that I was a Christian in high school and I was open about it, but that was because everyone knew me. How do I yeah. be a Christian in uni and open about it when no one knows me? Because I'm just hard? a fly on the wall. Oh, like I put a sticker on my laptop that said Jesus is on it. Jesus is on it. Yeah. So that worked. Okay. Because <laughs> that's really all I needed to do. Yeah. Because people were like, oh, he's a Christian. What a weirdo. Um, <laughs> <laughs> on his skateboard. Yeah. Yeah. Fully. And, <laughs> and so it actually meant that I had, and when I went to the uni bar, I personally have decided uh, that I don't, I won't drink, and I, that's not a thing that I would say about other people. Like, I, what? It's not a, it's a, it's a thing that I've gone. I'm I'm not going to drink as a yeah. human, and people are like, oh, why? And I'm like, well, I don't like it. Doesn't taste any good, and it's, so it's interesting I, how people take you saying I don't drink as like that. There's a problem with you. That it's the true. only drug yeah. that everyone's <laughs> like. What's wrong with you? Yeah, <laughs> every other drug that's like, oh, no, I don't know, but like with <laughs> drinking, yeah. it's like. What do you mean you don't drink? What's wrong with you? Uh, are you okay? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Should I, do I need to like, are you an alcoholic already? Like that's, that's yeah. where they're heading. Fully. You know? So yeah, so it was, there was a lot of, we would go to the uni bar all the time. That was where people would hang out. Yeah. It would, it would you'd finish your, your tutorial in between the, this one and the next one. If you're not running away to study in the library, you go to the uni bar and have a, have a chip and gravy roll for four bucks because <laughs> it's happy hour. And it was, it was the best, but you'd go and people would all grab a beer and I wouldn't. And they'd be like, why? And I'd be like, well, I don't like the taste. And so if I was going to drink it just to be get, to get drunk is why I would do it. And so I don't want to do that because I'm a Christian. And they're like, what, what does that mean? And so I got to talk about that quite a lot. Um, and so those two things were really good. Mm. Did they have a uni bar? At, you went to UOW yeah, yeah. too. Yeah, I didn't, have, there Great. wasn't a bar at my Oh, uni. really? Oh, yeah. it, the pool was the best bit. Oh, really playing, the playing pool. pool. Oh, you sounded like there was a swimming pool. Yeah. <laughs> I there is. Place. We all I went like, for a you? swim. We all like, went you guys all went swim. to the pool. I like, never yeah. went to the gym. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Nor did I. <laughs> but yeah, yeah the got really into playing pool at one point. It's very fun. 
Not that we were actually very good at it, but it was. I like playing pool. I once yeah. got stuck in Threadbow. For some reason, I wasn't going out. Oh, I'd been recovering from hoopy cough. <laughs> <laughs> and then we went to the snow. And so I couldn't be outside <laughs> too much. Like, yeah. it affected my lungs. And... Uh, you need to breathe. I just, yeah, breathe. that's all right. But I just, I remember playing so many games of pool. Yeah. I actually got reasonable at it. <laughs> 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 like I just kept pumping in $1 coins into the thing yeah. or $1, $2 coins. But pool's fun. That's, it a, that's fun. a good thing. Like you stand around the table and you're chatting to people yeah. and stuff. That's cool. So yeah. good. And I think like reflecting on even the last job that I had and the time at uni, echoing your th- thoughts, Joel, like I just enjoyed all the time. I think that's what I what I got most out of uni was time. It was time to build relationship, time to mm. think about what I was doing, time to muck around, time to like play around with this or do that, like mm. or see these friends or figure out this. Or another big one was time to figure out what we were going to do for youth on Friday <laughs> and try and make it epic. <laughs> There That's was, cool. There was a couple of us who were at uni at the same time, so it meant like, oh, it's like Wednesday, we can go up and like make something or try and do something fun for a youth on Friday. That was, that was, I very much enjoyed that. Yeah, I think, I mean, I was doing the similar thing and I think if I go, oh, I wish I didn't do uni, maybe I do still wish I did it because yeah. I had the, exactly the thing that you're talking about. I was leading youth um, with heaps, but then sometimes it just taught me it also like, just what am I doing with my time? Yeah. And I think, again, if I was more reading my word regularly, the, reading the word, not my word, <laughs> reading God's word yeah. uh, more regularly, then I would have used that time more wisely. So yeah. I still would have done uni, and I st- but I wouldn't have taken all this time and wasted it not doing anything. Um, and maybe, I mean... That's the thing, it's, it's so easy for us to say that too because like, oh, I finished uni, I finished school and then I just did uni and didn't do anything. Like, there's people that can't do that. You yeah, know? exactly. So I think I just, I wish I'd used it more wisely mm. for God and for m- the relationships and helping my family out and all that kind of thing. Whereas I think I got a little bit too into myself, a bit yeah. too lazy. And I think coming out of school is an interesting thing because you like, it's almost like... Uh, I mean, some of my experiences at school was like, I wish, I'm glad I'm not there anymore because we talked about like kind of the payout culture and the bullying and stuff. And it was kind of like, I reckon maybe it's a bit like, I deserve this because I deserve to have my time now because I don't have to deal with the people that I don't like. Like, I think that was something. And then, so that's probably why on the flip side, going to him like, not that guy. (laughs) Just like, I'm not keen on that guy. Like, he's not cool. And, and the difference, and the difference with uni and high school is that in high school you're forced to hang out with these people all the time. Yes. yes. Yeah. And at uni you can go, well, I don't want to have anything to do with these people because I don't yeah. need to. Yeah. yeah. It's like the, yeah, feeding the ego, right? It's like you talked about a few episodes ago, Braden, about you kind of moved away from church a little bit because you had the freedom yeah. to do that. When you're at uni, you have the freedom to drive almost anywhere you want, do whatever you want. I used to hang out with people until three o'clock in the morning after Bible study because yeah. that's what you could do. Mm. Yeah. But um, sometimes it wasn't always ideal to do that. And I, don't, <laughs> I, I wasn't learning that. Yeah, That's probably what I'm saying. I wasn't learning. Maybe I should take a little bit more responsibility in my life. Mm. And I think God would have taught me that if I had listened to him more. Yeah. I think a big thing for me as well is I was working. So I was at uni, but I was also working a couple of days a week in a really stressful casual job at a hospital that like... I think that taught me a lot about like working in like I think the 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 healthcare environment for people who aren't doctors especially like nurses and the stores people and everyone who works in a hospital it's a very stressful environment and everything everyone's I wouldn't say it's not as bad as the hospital I've heard the hospitality industry is but like a lot of people just aren't very nice to each other very blunt very like this is a matter of fact and just um, also, they're working overnight. Yeah, they're working like, overnight. They're so working all this crazy stuff. So, like, I think working in that industry taught me a lot, and also taught me a lot about working with those people who are older than you and don't have that church environment. I think I think that being exposed to that taught me a lot, as much as being exposed to like the playing in bands and 
what people were trying to find satisfaction there. I think also working with people who were 40 and they have they have kids and they maybe have a place to live, but what do they do on the weekend? Oh, well, I just drink and I gamble and I smoke. And like that's like what I look forward to. Mm. I think being exposed to that when you're 18 is was really important for me. Because you didn't want to drink I and just, smoke and gamble. Well, it's just like I that – is that is that it? Like, am I meant to just? Is that yeah. why we work five days? Is so that we can drink and gamble on the weekend and then go back to work? Yeah. Like, I think that was really. Yeah, it was really important to me, and I like I had a couple of people who worked there who were amazing, who were like just the best human beings who really were like, you're young, I'm going to look after you, like, and they didn't have to. My like my boss was absolutely lovely. But he was also like um, a refugee from another country who had quite a high level uni degree in that country that wasn't recognized in this country. So he was a very smart dude doing something that he was probably well, well overqualified to do. But how he expressed that was through kindness and gratitude and he would get annoyed, but he, he would also just like try and take that experience to try and teach me things i think he that was a really um fun relationship i had but i think again he had that like all he was looking forward to was the weekend where he got to hang out with his son and that was all he wanted to do so like i think it was interesting for me having that experience where you're like okay like i'm at uni and maybe i'm not using that time well but i could also be just working and not committing myself in any way to god and just looking out for myself, I think there's selfishness. Like we've talked a little bit about maybe laziness and selfishness that creeps in at uni, but at the same time it also it manifests in different forms, whether you're going to uni or you're not going to uni. Like my, like you said, you've got some 16-year-olds who will become, um, who will go straight into uh, maybe a trade. And like I've seen that be super positive for people. I've also seen it be super negative for yes. people. So. Yeah. I think as much as sometimes I think as some times in this podcast, I'm sure you've been a bit like, oh, like they're all just like, oh, I don't, not sure about uni, kind of not this or that. I think like that goes with everything, and I think it was mainly like I feel like echoing Joel. If I'd used that time to connect more with God, I definitely would have grown the most. Yeah. Where, like, where are we seeking God's purposes in exactly. whatever we're doing? And it doesn't matter what the situation is. Yeah. What do you reckon, Eith? I think, interestingly, a lot of it comes down to what are you prioritizing when you're doing stuff? Yeah. Exactly. So if you're going to uni and you're prioritizing doing really well at uni, yeah. or if you're going to uni and prioritizing mates, or if you're going to work and prioritizing the weekend... Yeah, like it's it's actually or, or the smoking or the gambling or the whatever. Yeah. it's where you're putting your your priorities at. Mm. I think it's going to really change whatever you're doing. Yeah, uh, no matter what it is, whether it be high school, whether it be university, whether it be even year thirteen. Like if I had spent year thirteen being like, oh yeah, all this Bible stuff is cool, but I'm still playing soccer on the weekends, and that's actually what I'm all about. Like I just want to focus on my boys yeah and playing soccer like that that could be a way to do it but i think what i'm hearing is what improves all of those different situations is that prioritizing god and prioritizing that relationship with him and whether that and and that that is a part of that's reading your bible that's praying to him that's committing time at church that's staying up till 3 a.m at bible study like i think that's i think that's a great thing like that's a that's a thing that uni affords you to do but like the uh, the alternative could have been oh actually i'm not going to stay up tonight at bible study because like i don't really like i don't really like i'm here because i'm i'm here from 7 30 9 30 and i'm gonna go home and i'm gonna wake up to study because that's all i'm focused on yeah and like staying from 7 30 9 30 is not wrong that's not what i'm saying but what i'm saying is where the priority is yeah is really interesting yeah and really important some people treat their church life the way that we've described maybe we were treating our uni life yeah like, yep. This exactly. flip side prioritize marks or a certain friendship group, and yeah, I'm a Christian, but I just 
rock up and I'm only there when I need to be between mm. these hours. Do, do you go to do you go to church for the piece of paper? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, that's all right. I think like um, if you're talking about priorities, Ethan, it is like when you make God your priority, all the other priorities fall into place. Yeah. Or he gives you clarity on those. Absolutely. And um, I, we've talked about it in a roundabout way, I suppose, but that's what I missed back then. Whatever mm-hmm. it was, whatever I was doing, as we're saying, if I wasn't prioritising God, I was probably just priorita- prioritising not being at school anymore, Yeah. but also like prioritising my relationships with people. And that's a really good thing, but I think it's also like that was becoming, that was, sorry, that was coming before God. Yeah, a lot of the time, and that's that's the part that I regret. Um, but then again, like God has His own purpose in that to teach us that too. So sometimes I think that maybe we had to go through that to learn that, so we can tell people on a podcast <laughs> that that's <laughs> maybe what you should do. <laughs> um, but now you're working a full time job, and you're able to go well. Back when I was in this situation, I wasn't prioritizing God. And now you're in a new situation. But to be honest, it's not like it's different. But that that need to prioritize God is not yeah. mm. in that space. You know what I mean? And, yeah. it's, and so it's now I'm, okay, now I'm just doing what I was, like, am I just going to do what I was doing at uni at work? Like, am I just going to go to work because... Uh, you get the milk for the man, get the paycheck and... Get, get, get paper, yeah. not... <laughs> get the paper. <laughs> get, get the paper. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> is, is that why you're going to work or is it... While you're at work, are you? Yeah, are you, are you are you at work going? All right, money, 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 money. Or are you at work going? Oh, how do I think about God? And then that informs what you do at work. Because to be honest, like you, I think we could talk about full time work as a whole thing as well. If yeah, we that's, a whole that's, podcast, that's a whole that's a whole separate podcast. Yeah. Uh, my mum, and if we talk about if I'm the one on the podcast, I don't think I should be, but. <laughs> So I'll just say it before I get kicked off uh, for that episode. (laughs) But my mum has this really cool thing that she said to me since I was really young was uh, my mum, when she goes to work, she does this thing where she works to live. She doesn't live to work. Yeah. I think that's a really cool way of looking at it because that's still going to work and that's still making work really important because it is, it's really important, but it's not why you're living. And you're being paid by someone to do a job, and I understand mm. some people who are like, I don't, I don't want to mix that up. Like they're paying of me course. to do this. How do I like? I just want to think about that. Like I totally understand that, but at the same time, I think it's just thinking about how can I glorify God in this situation. Yeah, and how can I glorify God with everything that I try and do today? Yeah, yeah, and, and in and that you're honoring your employer too, exactly for paying mo- paying you money. Yeah, yeah, I think Jesus had a job. Yeah. Until he, he until he had to start telling the Jews what they were wrong about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, like he was a carpenter, and then he was because yeah. he was looking after his family because he was doing what he needed to do. Yeah, taking then, responsibility. And I think that's a podcast yeah. I'd really like to talk about. It's taking yeah. responsibility because that's something a journey that I've been on in, in my life. Um, I go to to answer your question, Eth. I go to work a lot less for the money than I used to, mm-hmm. but I think I also probably don't go there every day going. What can I do for God in this situation? Yeah. yeah. But my attitude is a lot different thanks to God to work. Um, and he's given me the opportunity to earn this money and that money is his. Mm. That's the other thing. And I think we always want more money, but when you change your priorities again and think about what's this money for, yeah. and why has God put me in this position and how do I utilize this situation as much as possible now? And I try and far more than I used to is try and build relationships with people. I still, in my previous jobs have had a thing where I'm like, I get very, I think I try to be very, show a lot of integrity at work and that's bred into me by my parents first of all, but then also being a Christian, it's doubly important. Yeah. Super important. And I used to get very upset when people didn't behave with integrity and just thought about themselves and selfishly. I now am, God has made me a lot more understanding of other people. Yeah. And I start finding reasons about why they're doing that and I don't get as upset about it. So then I can actually, we talked about it a few episodes ago, be peacemaker and try and go, hey, 
like what's going on why are you upset and like and try and build relationship with them as we're all built to be relational and then again as i like always like to say jesus died on the cross not just to reconcile us with god but to reconcile our relationships with other people whether yeah. they're christians or not and that's something that i've been focusing on a lot in the last year especially doing the shock absorber podcast with Stu, he's really brought my attention to that and how important that is and that's where i think i really try and go hard i send it before i'm a relational person i try and really i try don't always succeed in reconciling or show or establishing reconciled relationships with people that's what i'm trying to do i think a lot of time at work got anything to add there Are you trying to find a bible verse oh that would be <laughs> excellent <laughs> Um, but my my Bible app is. What do you error. think? Of, do you know? What are you <laughs> yeah. thinking of? No. I'm just looking for the bit where Jesus tells that parable about where we're storing up treasures in heaven. Treasures, and are we are we storing up in our own little storehouses that'll just burn to the ground at the end and and, and like all fade away like that that paper, whether it be money or whether it be a uni degree or whether it yeah. be like whatever it is whatever that equivalent is, uh, or employee of the month, I don't know. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> the, whatever, that, whatever that paper is, is that stuff we're storing up here Yeah. when we should be trying to figure out how to store up treasures in heaven in whatever we do. Yeah. So it's not, a, it's not a ditch whatever you do and like <laughs> don't hear that at all. It's a, it's a while I'm at work, yeah. how am I storing, or how, why I'm at uni while I'm at church, how am I storing up treasures in heaven yeah how you, i think that's what you were saying yeah how are you investing in the kingdom mm. instead of just investing in what you want matthew 6 yeah. 19 do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal for where your treasure is there your heart will be also i think that's a really cool yeah, that's mm. verse and then oh, he goes on there. But that's Jesus talking about treasures in heaven. Mm. Matthew six nineteen to 21. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. I think that's, that's a really... Yeah, that's... That's, that's encompasses this whole podcast of what we're talking yeah. about. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Yeah. If your treasure is in heaven, if you treasure, you're investing in God, that's yeah. where you'll make a lot of difference in the world. Absolutely. Should we wrap it up? I think yeah. we should. We did, did we eat all the chips? <laughs> <laughs> One we, day. We still haven't brought One them. Day. We will. We'll One get day. Them. They'll be here. They will. And we'll eat them and it'll be so annoying to people that are listening <laughs> to the podcast. <laughs> We're talking about maybe getting sponsored by oh, yeah. the chip shop. Oh, by the chip shop. We want to get a chip shop. shop. Yeah, oh, we we'll are wow. talking about people's locals over the last couple. Where, oh, where they go. yeah. That's, that's actually a really good way to plug the Discord, guys. If yeah. you're going to get the Discord, let us know your favourite chip shop in the Discord. Yeah. yeah. And then we might actually end up go vi- go and visit them. Oh, yes. Excursion. <laughs> Excursion. Yes. Chip excursion. Anyway, let's wrap up the chips for now. We've finished them all. Thank you so much for joining us, guys. Make sure you get on the Discord. The link will be in the show notes. Finish off with a one way. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. We really appreciate it, uh, listening to us babble on about stuff, but hopefully it's helpful because we love uh, trying to work out how to be Christians in the world. Now, if you're interested, there's plenty of other Chip Lush episodes. Check them out. We've also got a ton of other content coming out, including the Shock Absorber podcast we've had out for a while. Uh, That is how we like to do church at Soul Revival Church. We We talk about how we did it and how we're developing that and how we're using the youth and the older generations to love people with Jesus' love. Also, we've got the digital services that we've been doing lately. Check them out as well. Love ya.